Football Fancast live on YouTube. And you can find us each and every Tuesday for the year out the 2014 season at youtube.com slash user slash F-E-Y-S, guys. I am the king of podcasts. And if you haven't heard of me, I you know do some podcasting of my own, uh, doing wrestling, um, which I do a show called Wrestling is a Podcast. Last year, I went ahead and with my brother Andy, who's on with us today, uh, we decided last year to go and put the show together. And we hosted it at a different home, but we have moved to a new home here on YouTube. A um, little change up in the lineup, but we hope to make this show in the second season even better than last year and really just make it more about what we always wanted to do was make it more about the fans. We're fans just like you, and we would love to hear from fans like you throughout the show on every show that we do going forward. So tonight's program, we're going to feature the season as in general, all the changes that we've gone through since we last talked in December, from the coaching staff change to new players, new personnel, to the schedule coming up for the 2014 season. We're getting ready to you know, see FEU take on Nebraska this uh, Saturday. And, man, Andy, I'll tell you, uh, we had a lot of wholesale changes this year. And I, I don't know about you, but the uh, way things are looking this year, I mean, there's a lot of a lot of hope. And there, we're, we got a lot of players now that – I don't know. I think Coach Polina did pretty good bringing us some horses to help us out in the last couple of years. And I think Charlie Partridge did a good, really good job recruiting. And I think, uh, man, we got some good players coming back, and things can look really good this year. Six and six, we can we can think higher than that, man. Yeah, I, th- I think that, you know, the name Polini is going to be dying out here pretty soon. Oh, yeah. Nobody will remember all of that stuff going on last year. But I, I just think that the finish last year was good. But even more important was that we kept a lot of the pieces that drove that finish here. I think we're going to find out that one of the more important pieces that we have this year isn't on the field. It's on the sideline. That's Brian Wright. The guy is super important for our offense yeah. to keep running the way it started running at the end. Albeit, I understand that the end of our schedule was a little weak, and we had some opponents that we can really go. But you know, hey, listen, it happens. Yeah. That we didn't, you know, we didn't set up the schedule to go that way. You just have to play your games. When you play your games and play them well, like we did at the end, use that momentum coming into the new year. New coach, you know, there's a lot of recruiting momentum going on. I think we're going to be all right. And my thing too, you know, let me tell you. What I'm always surprised about is, is the one thing that happened when we heard that Charlie Partridge was coming in as a new coach, that he looked at what the team did last year and what the coordinators did and said, man, you guys, you pulled through all the crap that we were going through last year, persevered, and now you guys are being rewarded by coming back and being coordinators again. And I, I'm, put, I'm putting myself on the line for you guys because I think you guys did the right thing on both ends of the ball. Well, so I don't want you guys coach again. I don't think Brian Wright was rewarded by being a coordinator. I think he made a sacrifice to stay here and to finish what he was starting. But, but he was. Did you think he was going to go like upgrade to another school and become a head coach? Or he could have been a head coach. Maybe not at maybe not at a D one level, but he definitely could have been a head coach with what he did. I mean, he was talking to teams. He probably didn't want to take one of those jobs, but I got to tell you, I think he did. In those four games, I think he did a good enough job to earn himself a, a head coaching position somewhere. Or, you know, like now, I mean, he's an assistant head coach, I think, too. So, you know, he's going to be – he's going to – I think he did the smart move to groom himself a little bit more, you know, build this team up. When they get a little bit better, it's going to be hard for us to keep them. True. But, I mean, for what it's worth, we got a good spot right now. I mean, there's just a lot of excitement because, you know, I think – Whatever we went through halfway through last year, all that is in our rear view mirror. Everything's just going forward. And the coach, you know, like what do you, what do you think of Coach Charlie so far? Like, I mean, you know, the vibe we're getting out of him. Oh, um, he's, he's exciting, man. He's different. He is an engaging guy. Listen, for somebody to be able to talk, like I said, to go to the same example, for somebody to be able to talk Brian Wright into staying, it says a lot about what he could do. I know we've had some high-profile recruits, you know, uh, you know, albeit we didn't keep 
the top guy in that class. But I think that you know, I think it's going to come around. I think it just takes time. I mean, you just can't ask for miracles to happen right away. And I think that's one of the only bad things that that I can see is that people are going to expect too much out of this year, not taking into account that whenever you change a new to a new coach, it's difficult. Well, you know that's all going to be like that, and that's like any program anyway. But one thing that's going to happen is it's that hype that we get at the start of the year, and that we have to like because here's the thing: we're going to start off a couple a couple games, you know, with some heavy hitters again. Nebraska, Alabama. I mean, God bless, man. Like, let's make it a little bit harder for us, right? <laughs> just lay on, just just gamble, like you know, throw the chips all in, man, and let's see what we can do. Because let me tell you, the crowd, the fans are going to get hyped like us, and we're going to start drinking the Kool Aid. That's like we do every year. You know, we played Nebraska back in '09, and what happened? Like, oh, you know what, man? I think we can keep up with them. I think we might be able to go ahead and stay. We can stay with them until the second half. And what happened? Well, 49 to three. We're, yeah, but we're not going to get killed 49 to three this time. No. I mean, I, I'm I'm pretty sure that we can, you know, we can hang our hat on that. Our problem is is that, you know, are we going to go in there with these expectations that we're going to upset the number 22 team in the nation? Listen, anything can happen, but come on, man. I mean, you guys, this, this is getting it, it's getting a little far fetched to think that we're going to go in there and just have Nebraska just like go. What happened? It can happen, but it's, it's doubtful. But, Andy, what I will say is that from year to year, what we need to start seeing now, from these are no longer – I don't like to look at them as suicide games anymore. And I don't look at the paychecks we're going to get for those for, you know, the program gets. What I think we're going to get now, and this is just where I'm coming from, every time we play these kind of games, we need to start seeing now that – we have the offensive line can match up to that defensive line. That our players have the kind of speed, the kind of uh, you know, the kind of uh, they can they have the same caliber. Like we're recruiting the same type players. Yeah, but, you, as but, but, that, but that's one of the that's one of the things people want us to be built to beat these big teams, and we're not, man. We're built to play in Conference USA, which is a good thing. I mean, we have a lot of good defensive backs, a lot of young guys that are coming in playing well. So we're built to run five defensive backs, small, quick linebackers. I mean, that's just how we're built. Are we going to have a tough time against Nebraska? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, there's some big hosses up front. They're going to yeah. try to run the ball. You know, they have a you know all conference running back. It's going to be tough. And not to say we can't do it, but you know when you guy you know when you got you know your biggest defense alignment. You got a couple at 300, you know, at defensive tackle, and your two defensive ends are running around 250, 260. Mm -hmm. It's hard to stop the run against the big Nebraska team. So, everybody, if you're just checking in here for, and you've been wondering what's been going on here, you just having to catch us here on YouTube. FAU football fan cast. This FAU football you fans out there, you know, if you don't think there's been enough out there, because you know what, you don't want to hear the humdrum sports radio talk, and let's say how many, you know, what, what the ranking is on this team, and AP ranked and you know all American this and that or other and they have this you know this many yards for this many touchdowns. It's not what matters to us. It's about the team itself and knowing that we you know we're looking at the start of the season and we're saying to ourselves as fans just like you, we're looking forward to seeing a pretty good season going up. I mean I just think uh, like you said Conference USA last year coming in the first time running against the Conference USA opponents. I thought we looked pretty good against them. I think there were a couple of games we should have had last year. I thought Rice, off the top of my head, was a game that we should have gotten. But I'll tell you what, this year round, you can just feel that. I, I think we are now getting that recruiting cycle in that even goes back to Pelini, where I think the guys we're bringing in now, it's like you're seeing more depth. We're not as light as we oh, were. We're more, I mean, we're, we're much deeper, and we're a much better team than we have been for a few years, but... The, the key to the season doesn't have to do with this beginning stretch that we have. It is when we take uh, Western Kentucky at home and when we play Marshall on the road. Those two games will determine our Conference USA season right there. So and the first two games, you evaluate the program. You evaluate what you guys did during practice. Listen, listen. Uh, yeah. If you get, I mean, if you get, if you get pounded on by Nebraska, who's at 22, and Alabama, who's at two. I mean, what are you, are you expecting for us to, to hang in there for a couple of quarters? 
I mean, yeah, man, everybody does that. We always do the same thing. Hey, yeah. man, it's it's only fourteen to three at the half. We're doing good. No, we're not. We're not doing good at all. But no. but that's what happens. It, you you try to look at it the best you can and say, listen, we don't have the horses to hang with these guys. Sometimes the games just play themselves out, and that's how it works. Agreed. And no, uh, but the thing is, is that you've got to come in with some. There, there's expectations we should still have coming in to those two games just to see how far we can go. But when it comes down to it, look, this is something that happens every year. I mean, it's, all, it's always good, it's always good to go into the it's always good to go into the season with optimism, you know, with that that hope that you can get the big upset, that you can start off, you know, Charlie Partridge's era with like a huge upset. Listen, I would like it more than anybody, but you just have to bring yourself down back down to reality and say, listen, we need to work on having a nine and three season is what we'd rather be looking at. And the bottom line is, we go through this every year. Every, I mean, Howard put this through us every year, and you know we've gone through. We start off losing season, but we and turn tell, it around. And tell me you don't have, and tell me you don't have hope when you turn the game on, you know, and say, man, we, I think we can get these guys. Well, of course we're supposed to, but that's the whole point. Is as fans, you're supposed to have hope when you go into it. I mean, you're you're happy to see that, like, look, we're going to be on good, you know, national television. We get exposure. You know, we might have, you know. I think you maybe the announcers this year will talk a little bit more about us. Like you know, it's like listen, are, are we going to be the next? Are we going to be the next Appalachian State? <laughs> you know, maybe, but I... <laughs> nah. As, as but we don't need to think like that. I just think that look, we're a good mid-tier Division One program on the uprise right now, and we should look to be about 500 this year. But that's where I see us. Well, I I think we're going to be a little better than 500, but. Yeah, I mean, I, it wouldn't surprise me for us to be around there. So, a couple of things we got to talk about is, of course, you know, we on this program we like to go ahead and uh, lay claim and praise and honor the man that is responsible for giving us this program so many years ago, a little over a decade ago, Howard Schnellenberger. By the way, he's been getting himself a, a pretty busy in a lot of things. I love the fact that last week I heard about the news that they're going to name the stadium after him and. Boy, somebody need to deserve that. Like, he has got the, got the statue as you go into the stadium, but the fact they're going to name the field after him, I love that. Well, I, it has to do with Charlie Partridge coming in. I, I don't think Carl Pellini really cared much for Howard Schnellenberg. He wanted to get out from underneath his shadow, and I think he thought that distance was the best way to do that. But I don't think, I don't think Charlie Partridge is threatened by him, so I, I think this was something that he kind of probably helped Something that was probably in motion before, but I think bringing in Charlie Parts, he was comfortable doing it. And, you know, it's long overdue, but it's fine. Yeah. But the thing is just that, but what does that tell you, too? That, you know, look, he goes to Louisville, they name the stadium after him. And then FAU, they come in, you know, hey, look, they, I, guess the, I guess the team feels better about calling it Howard Schnellenberger Field instead of Geo Group Stadium like they were going to do last year until that whole thing imploded. <laughs> we could have put bars around it. <laughs> that was uh, I mean on top of everything else from last year like I'll you know, tell you how nice is it we're like completely removed from all that it's this, still kind of like back of our F heads but this FAU PR in general that office has been on overtime for like the last year and a half right yeah oh yeah well, tell me about it it's been it's been a big mess this year um you know so, looking back at last year, like, you've been following along more with the team and all the news and stuff. Like, um, I don't know, when you're looking at the, coming up to this year and you look at the team right now and the guys we got coming back, you know, we, I mean, does it look like Jaquez keeps the job? I mean, do we see Hankerson? Do we see, like, what do you think is going to happen when it comes to, like, you know, offensive, defense, the guys we're bringing back? Like, what are you getting for, as a take, you know? Just well, uh, what, what are we going to look at? With What guys can we look forward to seeing back on the field really making a difference? Well, the big guys coming back, I mean, Willie Deuce definitely is the guy on offense that you like to see come back. But you like to see that the two quarterbacks that were going into the season, they're back. So last year we didn't know if we had any quarterbacks. This year we know we have a couple of quarterbacks that could play. So that's a good thing. And, you know, you still got – uh, you know, a good veteran linebacker in Andre Kirk. And you still got, um, you know, Braden Lyons. He's a veteran offensive lineman. So you got guys in different, you know, positions 
different squads in the field that have some talent. The problem is, is that some of the people playing with these guys are young, and we might be feeling some growing pains. You know, it just depends. I mean, when you lose guys like Mustafa Johnson, when you lose Corey Henry, who had a hell of a year last year. Yeah. I mean, guys like that, they just they just hurt. You know, Aldarius Glanton in the you know in linebacking court hurts. It, it it just goes on and on. I mean, Randall Johnson again, another linebacker. This all of this just hurts. We are going to feel some growing pains, even though people say that you know, hey, we got all these good recruits coming in. Yeah, these recruits aren't going to play a whole lot this year. They they might play some towards the end, but they're not playing against Nebraska and they're not playing against Alabama much. No, you know what? That's a that's a good thing because you know it's not like we had it like you know a few years ago where if you just came in and you were kind of like this kind of blue chipper recruit, you're going to get thrown into the into the wolves right away. Now there's some competition between some positions, so now you have to kind of fight for your job. That's a well, good thing. And that, yeah, and and that's that's all you can ask for. And then eventually, when these young guys start to to mature, they'll they'll be like some of they were just a little thin on a lot of positions on the field though. Yeah, but I mean, it's gonna. Well, the one thing is, you know, at least you're gonna find from some of the uh, some of your starters, you're gonna see if they are gonna be able to, you know, first couple games, how they're gonna perform, and you know, at least I think you got guys that with some experience. Which you know, when we have to start the season, and you want to make sure you keep your team pretty leveled when they go out there to start off before you get to the conference USA schedule. You got to say to yourself, you know what? At least you got some experience. You got some guys that have experienced, and you know, been around for five years. Some of these guys, like, you know, we got a couple of guys that played in 2009 against Nebraska and were there, so they got all this experience. They can go back and mentor back to the players that are are already going to be out there that have been playing together. Like, you got some offensive guys, linemen now that have played some games together. You got defenses that have kind of gelled together. You got at least that to go. You got that going for you. We we lost plenty of people last year, and it, it it's hard for our school at this point to overcome that kind of, you know, to have the depth to overcome it. I mean, it's just going to take a, a while for for Parchers to bring in recruits, to bring in the quality guys that are going to come in and be able to play. I mean, we have things on the field like right now. Okay, you have Willie Dukes at one wide receiver position. Do you know who the other guy is going to be? I mean, is it going to be Stoshek? Is it going to be, you know? I, you're looking at some of these young guys and going, who is going to step up? I mean, is it going to be Lucky Whitehead? Is it DJ Justy is going to step up? It's a wide open spot, and it's an important spot. Your number two wide receiver spot, a tight end, same thing. So, you know, same thing on defense. You know, you have Dejon Smith on one side. Who's going to be the other side? You know, who's going to play opposite of him? These are tough decisions that we're going to have to make, and we're going to feel some growing pains because of it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, and, and we're going to just have to go through and, and we have to just find out what guys are going to step But But, of course, with any college football season and every team, you find some guys that just end up standing out, and then you know what? They get to start next week, and then maybe they continue to do well because people can just automatically, you know, find themselves in a good spot if they get if given the opportunity. You don't know what's going to happen. We like to see if there's a couple of guys that – Come up all of a sudden, we say, "Hey, who's that guy? What's that number he's wearing?" Well, Damn, and, and I don't think, and I don't, and, and I don't think that we have lack of playmakers. I think there's plenty of people that have talent. The problem is, do you have the size at this point to get in there and play when you're young? Do you have the experience to get in there and play? You know, sometimes it's just stuff that we just don't have, and it's just going to take a while to get it. Yeah, agreed. It's gonna. I mean, but, but, I mean, and you know, that if you're a fan. You just just practice a little patience, man. We do it every year. No, no, don't get me wrong. I mean, this is probably the most optimistic we've been as a fan base in a in a few years. I, way more than last year. I think people were mildly optimistic last year, but I think we're much more optimistic this year. I mean, going into it, I think now knowing that we went into Conference USA and played pretty good against some of those teams. I think we think that in our mind we have a shot, you know, to be a dark horse title contender. I don't see any reason why not. It's just going to come down to two games: Western Kentucky and Marshall. And playing Marshall on the road is going to be difficult, but we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it. Yeah, they were they were tough to deal with last year. Um, you know, the other thing too, and I'll, let me just be completely honest here. Like, unless you are able to sit down in Boca and you can catch every afternoon practice if you can. Like, how much as a fan open. can you... They're not open. Really, 
Oh, say again. Oh, they haven't been at all. Well, to the media, but not to, uh, open to the press. Oh, or to to be open See? to the press. Well, because the thing is this: it's like I'm I'm a fan. I like to think I'm a pretty good devoted fan of FAU, and I like you know the one thing I can tell you is like it's kind of hard. To, like I mean, if you're a football fan, you know when you're leading up to the season, you're leading up to preseason, you're leading up to actual you know game time. We're coming up, you know, a couple of days before you know season opener, and let me tell you, like, not so easy to go ahead and find information about the team. Yeah, you can find a couple of words on FAU sports and a couple of news sites, and you know, maybe like you know, wait for Evan Cohen on 106.3 to like you know come around to it for a few minutes to talk to a coach or a player, and then you know listen to Mets talk all day long or whatever. But like the thing is, <laughs> it's tough for you to get in to get yourself involved with the team when you don't hear anybody talking about it. And uh, because we're just we're just not important on the national landscape. I mean, well, that's not the way we feel about it. <laughs> I mean, come I, on. You know, it, it, I mean, just look at the amount of people that turn out to games. You know, and and that I think that Charlie Partridge is probably a better suited coach for that kind of role where he gets out, he understands you have to engage the fans and engage, you know, uh, donors and things like that. And I don't think that was Carl Polini's. Uh, Forte, unless By the was, way, you, know. you bring that up, and that's that kind of interesting you say that because you know that the the coaches show they brought it back. Uh, you know, that's on radio on on uh, on ESPN radio. You know that they brought that back to the borough bar and grill. They brought it back on campus. Yeah, and then you know, listen. There's plenty of things that uh, that FAU is doing. Oh, listen, for example. They're they're doing the uh, the alcohol sales for everybody 21 and over in the stadium. You know, is that a good idea or a bad idea? Listen, if it's going to get more people to go to the games and they're going to be able to sell more alcohol, do you not think that they are going to just take a flyer and take a risk to do that? Now let me ask you quick, because that's just a very good point because that was one of the first concerns that people had when FEU Stadium opened a few years back. Okay is because everybody complained about the fact that you had to go to the expensive seats, the 1300 bucks seats and up, to go listen. ahead and drink in the big <laughs> and listen, and, and we, you know, we, the first year, we went and we sat by that rail that separated, you know. That, <laughs> and that, how, many people, how many people did you see, you know, sliding under the rail or climbing over it, and you see the cop come down from the top and say, hey, get out of here, you got to get out of here, and they have to put their beer back or whatever. <laughs> It was ridiculous, man. I mean, you just can't. It was just comical. I just remember the first game we went to. Remember, like, there was one cop at the very top. Oh, that yeah. Was brutalized. Just it's like, yeah. hey. Like, he was yelling at yeah, the lady. Yeah, in the guy's she face. Uh, what is she doing? Know. She's, like, getting arrested or something. Yeah, he was, he was just being a. <laughs> I know what you're going to say. We're going to censor ourselves. <laughs> yeah. No, there's a lot of words you can put there. <laughs> but all I'm saying is, okay. But this, you know, this is obviously the draw of sales. They want to get more tickets sold. I mean, you know, I mean, yes. The other thing, too, is that what's most important to me that I say about this is that, okay, you have the alcohol sales, and if even if you had club seats, which we moved from the rail, the, just right on the outskirts, on the fringe of the club side, of on the home side, we were sitting next to all the recruits, mothers, and all that stuff. And it was it was a very it was a very fun section to to sit in. Yeah, you got to talk to a lot. It was a it was like the recruiting ticket area, and we got to sit there and talk to a lot of recruits. It was very it was a very good entertaining area. And you talked to kids, the high school players that are getting talked up by the school, and you just heard, oh yeah, we're talking to us. Like I think he's gonna come. I think he's gonna come. It's like, and you just get you get some. You, you talk know, to their parents. Questions. You get a good feel for them. Yeah, it was, it was very entertaining to sit there. Yeah. So what happened then now this year? You know, we go ahead and move over. Last year, we moved to, to the area, to the club section, so that basically we're paying, you know, the, the, the lower end of the club seats. But our thing is we're in, the, in that home section, and we can go upstairs to the deck where everybody goes up to drink. And then if you want to bring it up, but, like, look, it's so hot. Nobody wants to bring the, the stuff downstairs. It's, it's, worth it. it's worth to pay that, the extra money to be at the deck. There's no doubt about absolutely. it. Absolutely. But the thing is, everybody stays on the deck, and they just watch the game right there from the little you know balcony or whatever. They don't come back down to the seats. Now, if they're going to do the alcohol sales, you know what? Then let that the alcohol, the, you know, let the people come down, serve the beer downstairs, let those guys get some tips. Let's get that guy used to be at a Lockhart Stadium with the old 
orange hat come on. It's like, that's <laughs> cool. That's cool, <laughs> the, the, the The Canes guy. Yeah, oh, get that God. guy back. He was good. Get him as like you know garbage can full of beer, whatever. He's like, oh, let's go. I'm like, come on, man. It was good stuff, man. He was, but, he was entertaining. But he was good. He sold a lot of beer, and you know that was the one thing that Lockhart Stadium, you know, people loved. But when you lose that, you took it away, and you you put these restrictions that said, okay, the concessions are not necessarily, you know, if you're not in that home section, you are kind of away from a lot of stuff. So without getting the detail. Go go find text, go find seats in the blue bucket seats. Those are the best seats for everything. I know, but it, it okay. Like if and you, investment. for example, if you're at a home game and you just you know sometimes I can just go out because I, I like to go, you know, uh, over to Mississippi Suites. So I, I walk to the opposite side over there. Yeah. But if you walk through that stadium during some of these games, it's cavernous. There's no noise. It's just a few people hanging around. I mean, it's very quiet. The only way you fix that is to put a good product on the field. You get good teams. Play people will come. You're a Bucks fan. Bucks. Nobody went to a Bucks game until what happened? They started to win football games. And yeah. That's what happens. To us. The year we're, we might not get anybody this year, but if we have a nine and three season going in this year, and people next year, hey man, if it's not that bad, we should go watch go a few a couple a few games. Right. But here's the other thing too, Andy, is this: when we're sitting down there in those seats, half those people that could be sitting in those seats that have already bought tickets for them, they're sitting up in that deck because they have to go get their alcohol served up there. Now. You could do that if you want to go get the hard liquor and go up to the bar. But some of these people they don't they want to go back down and watch the game. Go back down, get beer served to them ice cold, and they'll tip the guys or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I, some people like I said some people just don't want to watch the game in the seats, and that's that's just going to be a fact of life in every college football stadium. No. So you know, listen, you get a good product, you'll get football fans to go out there and watch your games. That's how it works. I mean, we but now here's the question. We, okay, I mean, we we hyped it up. Without without a good team at all, we hyped it up good enough to get the stadium filled the first day, and then it just the balloon popped, and we have never blown up another one again. Yeah. So now, I mean, hopefully, we get a nice little crowd for this first game, mm-hmm. you know, in a few weeks. But maybe we won't. We don't know. And it's against a good opponent, so and it's a Saturday night. Yeah, but I mean, it, you know, it's just it's it's. You get a good opponent in there, that's how you get people in the stands. You get a good team out there that plays there, you get people in the stands. So now, when it comes down to it, the beer sales now, we're going to move off from this, is you know, is the effect of the students. Because now you're going to, I mean, you already had the students basically last year like bringing out sofas and couches and stuff out in front of the stadium. Yeah, but that's, but, that's, but that's supposed to be a college football atmosphere. That's what we need there. Those are the people that are going to eventually graduate from school, start coming back to the games, and you know they just have to be proud of what they graduated from. So if they're if the three or four teams that they saw when they were at school were you know you know one and eleven and all, they're not going to come back to watch unless we're good. Yeah. I guess the only thing I'm worried about is that now the sales or beers are, you know, what will if the students are going to be affected by it because now they can go and access it, and what they're we, already kind of like. Are, uh, what are we going to get bad PR because of that? Come on, we've had <laughs> no, plenty of bad PR that. for years already. Yeah. Doesn't really matter. <laughs> PR is going to ruin it more. Hey, the good thing is, is that, look, and this is one thing I kept talking about. When we talk in the, in the stands, it's like, you know what? You want better amenities at the stadium. You want more things to happen. So, like, yeah, you said better product on the field. You know, better. You know, you know, the, you know, things that you like to have out there, concessions that you want to have. You want to have more people if you can get them out there. You know, so that you can buy stuff as they're coming up and down the stands. Like yeah, that kind of stuff is good. Like I mean, you know, we're never going to get what Lockhart Stadium had in terms of concessions, but I mean, even the product was pretty good because of you know the vision we were playing. But you know, it's just everything's trying to build up, and I mean, the most important thing too is that you know, it's 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 to create that loyalty, that school spirit. As alumni and as students, to you know, really come out in full force to the stadium, enjoy, have a great time, have a great experience when they come. And the other thing I got to tell you about is the fact that you know, and this is something. A couple of things I was going to bring up is um, I'm going to just bring this up, and I want to finish this up with this if it's all right with you. So, getting fans outside of Boca Raton more involved. Like, I mean, you might have guys that say they're FAU fans, and, you know, they, they might catch the games that they're on cable or this and that. And, but the thing is, is just that 
I wish there was more that FAU could do. Which I mean, it's it's got to be tough with the marketing and what they could do. It it is it is tough to get an FAU fan from the seat of his house to the seat of the stadium. It is difficult, but it can be done. You just have to have a good team that people want to watch live. There is a difference between it's just like a movie. There are movies that you want to watch in the movie theater. You will fight to the, you'll fight the crowds. You'll fight the times, the the crowded area, and the concession high prices. Or will you watch a movie at home, you know, on DVD or you know, or Blu-ray, and you have the amenities at home? You have home theater. You have, what's going to make you leave your house to watch a movie outside of that comfort zone that you have? What is going to make you leave your house to go and watch FAU play in that stadium? Make you drive, you know, deal with crowds and with the parking and with walking to sit, all that. Yeah. What is going to make you get out there? And it's having a good team. And uh, I guess know, the other thing too is his fans. I'd like to see us do more and try to contribute more. Like you know, one thing I would love to see, and I know it's tough because there's not a lot of merchandise, but. Like, I went to Town Center Mall, Boca, this the weekend. I was looking for merchandise. Man, let me tell you how hard it is to go and find stuff. Like, I could go to a couple stores and find, well, maybe a couple of hats, a couple of shirts. But honestly, there's not much. And then even in the bookstore, and, you know, except for the stadium store itself, it's like, it's tough. Even online, yeah, it's yeah, tough. And, to and, you know, and it's Owl Time has got a nice store. I, it does. But, like, I understand. I mean, it is the... It is not the fact that we have a store that has it. It is the community backing it. I understand what you mean. Yeah. You want the community of Boca, but Boca is just not a college town. I mean, eventually, you know, they're talking about doing, you know, that thing on 20th Street. That, but, I mean, it, it's going to be tough to convert, you know, Boca into a college town. It's difficult. But you can I, have I, a good team and still be, and be, still be successful there. Uh, agreed. I just wish there were more fans we could see at the games. Number one, but then also like just to see, you know, more fans that are able to go in. Like, let's see you in gear. Let's see you supporting the team as much as you can. Let's let's see you out there showing your pride for this ball club all season long. It doesn't there's have to be. There's a lot of on there's, there's a lot of good loyal supporters. The problem is, is that it it just takes time, you know, to build that. And we haven't had the stadium that long. We haven't even had the team that long. Yeah. In the whole, you know, college football world, our team is, you know, like a like a kindergarten kid. So <laughs> it just takes time. I mean, compared to like a team like Nebraska that we're playing, we're like a kindergarten kid compared to them. Oh, I agree. I so, just think that, but it does help if you are able to get, you know, if you're a fan and you can tell somebody, hey, we're going to go to a watch party, we're going to go watch the game, or, you know, hey, you want to go and catch the seats? You know, seats are pretty cheap this year, and, you know, they're serving beer, and, like, you want to go ahead and, you know, have a good day of good college football. we got a good schedule. We're playing some really good teams. Come on, you know, you should go catch a game with us. Like, you know, you know if you could draw some more friends of yours and others that are, like, they're fans and they're kind of on the fence about going to a game, encourage them to come. And if you're a student, same thing goes. Like, you know, if you're here with a school, you know, support your school. Show some spirit. You know, you got other friends. You can, you know, great way to network. Make some friends. You know, get along with get get together with your friends. It's a great way to go and enjoy a Saturday. And you know, always at all times, do what you can to kind of just you know show your spirit, show your pride, be the fans that you know you can be. Be better fans. That's what I'm saying. Well, you know, like I said, get a better team and people will come out and watch it. It basically and, comes down to that. And we start off this Saturday with another season. We can see how this team's going to go. And, you know, going through the schedules, like, just off the bat with Nebraska, like, you know, um, how, I mean, I guess we could anticipate a loss. I mean, that's pretty not not a pretty safe bet, I guess uh, you could say. I mean, you can anticipate a loss, but you're, you're, looking, you're going into the game hoping that, you know, this team gives you signs of it's going to have a good season after this first couple of – after these first couple of games. Exactly. That's what exactly. you want to come out. You want to come out of those two games going, you know what, we're going to be all right this year. And I'm sure we are going to be right this year. Overall, I mean, you know, I guess next week we can go through and talk a little bit about the schedule, but I guess, you know, without getting any kind of expectations or predictions, let's just get into it, get back into college football. I mean, hell, besides FAU playing this weekend, there's some great games coming up. we got a bunch of scrimmage games because, of course, some – you know, like in Ohio State plays some scrub, or Florida plays like three straight scrubs, right? 
Uh, but, you know, some teams are playing some games. Miami plays Louisville on Saturday night. Florida State takes on uh, – uh, God, who else are they playing again? Oh, they're playing Clemson on Saturday night. So you got some games that you're looking forward to, like some good matchups. And, you know, of course, three days of nonstop college football, and then next week we get back to the NFL. It's like we're back in the spirit, and, you know, it, it's a good feeling. You, you can smell the football in the air. So my friend Tampa J always says, you can smell it in the air. It's that time of year. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's – you know, but there's plenty of competition for plenty of teams out there as far as who is going to watch whose game and who's going to go to whose game. You know, even Miami fans have difficult times going down there to oh. hurt. We, I mean, we used to go before before uh, before FAU. We used to go to Miami Hurricane games. It was tough for them to get crowds unless they were playing Florida State or Notre Dame or one of those teams. And yeah. you know, we just haven't had the one of those marquee teams. I mean, hopefully next year when we play Miami, we're gonna have a big crowd, and hopefully we get a couple of big crowds this year for, you know, just. I, I mean, I'm hoping that just our just our season opener will have a good crowd, because, you know, just because Charlie Parker just hyped it up and got the the you know the hype train going, we just can't drop the ball like we did the first time. You know, the to to lay a goose egg to Western Kentucky was the worst thing we could have done on opening day. Of the stadium, yeah. so. Okay. No, I think the marketing and everything they've been doing right now is good. You know, the the hype on campus has been good. You know, I walked around there this week. Uh, you know, I think people are just getting ready to go. And uh, I mean, you know, September 13th is coming up, and man, I don't know about you, I'm just I'm like amped and ready to go ahead and step into the stadium, get into our seats, and start watching some real good FAU football and see a team that's uh, destined to do better than last year and keep working on. The progress they got from last year with a new coach. Yeah, man, you got it. Well, that's gonna call for tonight. Uh, thank you everybody for tuning in. I know you know if you didn't get a catch to catch the the live broadcast here, of course you can find it on everybody YouTube. for tuning in. <laughs> We're just I like F A U. It's gonna take a little while for us to build a crowd too. Listen, that's okay. But that, that's the whole thing. This is on demand as well. So for those of you who are gonna catch this on the back end, thank you for uh, tuning in. Listen, and the, please the, don't tell friends and tell friends. Hey, and, the, uh, the important part is, is that we we want this to be interactive. We did just like listen. We dropped the ball last year. We came in. We put a podcast together. It wasn't very good. Was, I, I don't have any problem admitting it. It was just, it, it just we needed something, and what we need is fan input. So. Doing it this way on Google Plus, we can get people to come in, interact with us. We can get them on. They can talk. They can they can say their their piece, and we can get different perspectives. You know, not all the fans are for you. Not everybody thinks the same way, and everybody sees the same things going on. So that's the important part: is to get fan interaction. Yeah. So the best way to do that right now is this: you can follow us on Twitter at FAU Wise Guys. Uh, Andy's on there. He's the, he's the gatekeeper of the Twitter right there. And you can go through there, and there's a whole lot that will be done uh, when it comes to any information, interacting with the players and stuff. And we just ask for you to go and follow along there. you get got a lot of updates. you get a lot of information from there. We also have a Facebook page and also have a Google Plus page. Just look for FAU Wise Guys. You'll find us. But also you can find us on YouTube, youtube.com slash user slash FAU Wise Guys. You'll be able to find all of our all of our videos for the season here. And also, hey, give us some feedback if you want this to turn into an audio podcast. Because if you do, we will set it up, and then we will tell you how you can find it. It's very easy for us to do, but we start off here as a webcast. And, you know, make it – because, look, anybody has phones. you got YouTube as an app. You can watch us any, anywhere you want. But if you want to have it as an audio thing, we can make it as an audio thing for you. That's not a problem. Okay? And, and if you're interested – in joining us on one of the on um, one of the uh, the future shows, you can go onto any of those sites and look us up, or you can go to fauwiseguys at hotmail .com. You can email us directly. We can talk and interact, and we can find out you know a good date and time that we can that you can join us on the show. Perfect. There you go, guys. Thanks for listening to our listen first program. So if you, you if you it. if you made it all the way to the end of this show and you heard all that at the very end, you deserve to be on the next one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think, uh, personally, I know I know how you kind of evaluated last season. I think this first show turned out pretty well. Yeah, so. I, I think we're still I think we're still a bit stale, but I think if we put a couple of chili peppers here and there with some with some different oh, so thoughts. Yeah, I think we'll be all right. 
little Chili sriracha pepper. on there or something. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed the game against Nebraska. And September 13th, get your tickets. We hope to see you at the stadium, but we'll talk to you next week.